Lift off. Lift off. What's up, brother? Let's go. So it might look like it's fuzzy on your end, but um, it's not when I when it's done. Like the the image isn't fuzzy, right? Okay. Great. How you doing, brother? Because I want to see you in HD on this. Fuck thing. Hell. <laughs> <laughs> We're here. We did it. We did it. We made it happen. We fucking made it happen. It's um, it's a it's a we've done one before in which we chatted for a long, long, long time. And it's we, uh, it's, it's like somewhere. A, it's somewhere. I have it. Some well, I don't have it. Um, but it's out there. Has it been published anywhere? No, no. One day it's, it will. One day it will. But we get to chat almost a almost like a year and a half later. Is that how long it's been? Mm-hmm. Wow! About a, year, about a year and a half. Wow, brother, a lot changed. A lot has changed. Jeez, I mean, I mean, we we get uh, an insight into each other's life every every week. But um, I feel particularly this last few years, you and I have seen some some big changes. Yeah, yeah. Let's talk about that. So. Um, well, you've been acting, what, since you were like 10, eight? Since I was about 10. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So about 10 or 11. Mm-hmm. And, um, yeah, it's been, it's been my whole, I mean, my whole life. Certainly my, certainly like, um, and I think you can relate to this, but like, there's a certain there's a certain direction that your body and your mind goes in for a really long time. And it's kind of focused and in one direction. And, um, I don't, I don't know how much of that was came out of a place of trying to almost like escape, but yeah, certainly since I was probably 10. What? So to escape, what were you, what what were you escaping? (laughs) So, well, so for for me, I think uh, I think what we what I have kind of come to is that being quite a sensitive person in um, England, in in a way, and in in quite a difficult kind of family situation, I think I I was just escaping, well, escaping a kind of um, pain that I, I didn't want to real and fantasy was a big part of that, right? Like I could go off into fantasy quite, quite simply. And then the idea of joining like a circus was mm-hmm. quite a, a, was quite a kind of, uh, an appealing thing because essentially I could pretend and create in a world, um, that wasn't my, wasn't me dealing with like the circumstances that were going on. Right. Um, and, and so I think I just got used to, I, I just got used to this idea of like, yeah, well I can, I can really do this. I can really kind of just escape and join a, another family and another thing. And then I, I went to boarding school and, and so I mean, not that my family life was so, so traumatic that I had to escape, but more that I think I just had a, I had the thing, I had this kind of desire to leave all the time. Mm -hmm. Um, Did you feel different just uh, from most of everybody that you were interacting with in England? Yeah, I, I felt like, I felt like I was... I felt like I was in a place that didn't feel particularly like a feeling environment or a culture. Mm-hmm. And I was, and I was a big feeler, you know, like I felt things and I, and I, I soaked up things and I, and I kind of, I was very perceptive about certain, um, certain environments and my biggest kind of my biggest feelers went off and I just was 
I didn't feel culturally like there was actually a place to express or feel, but in, in, in some way, um, in some way, like the, it's, it's a different value system, you know, like, um, recently I, I've gotten into this idea that, that within me, there's a bit of a colonialist, you know, like I, I've got a bit of like British colonialism in my, in my system because I can, I can really get on the, like, things need to be rigorous and, you know, you've seen it. Like I can be very, like, I can get like that. Mm -hmm. And I think it was, it's in me in some way, but there's also this like big feeling part that's Mm -hmm. in me that, that, um, that's very empathetic and like feels and, and, and I, and I just, I wasn't really able at that age to have a control over it. So I was, I would act out a lot, you know, like I would, I was, I was, you know, I was like very emotional, big swings and here and there. And, um, and I think in that culture, it's when I was growing up, it certainly wasn't, there wasn't like there is now this kind of idea of, different learning styles, different things. I mean, I was terrible at school. Do you know what I mean? I was just like away with the fairies or I was like, you know, running off or whatever it was. I I just wasn't, I didn't learn like that. I didn't feel like I really like fit in with that, with that way of, of, of doing things. So yeah, there was, there was a sense that I I didn't really fit in, Mm -hmm. in it. Um, Yeah. I felt the same way. I, I was bouncing off the walls, uh, fidgeting in the chairs, yeah, uh, getting in trouble just for kind of being me. Um, yeah. Just, uh, you know, school's not for everyone. And I think that, you know, the way school, especially grade school, is kind of forced on us. The, obviously, we need to be educated and and also – Sitting in a classroom, having some teacher tell you how it is can be tedious, boring, um, you know, and it's not it's not very interactive uh, because, you know, and and look, I feel for grade school teachers because from their perspective, you know, they're herding cats, like especially the difference between boys and girls where girls, at least from my experience, were were really willing to sit there and. Uh, learn and and boys were you know picking their fingernails eating pencils yeah uh, that was that was me yeah throwing paper writing passing notes back and forth uh you know all that ridiculous shit that we were doing but that's just how we were as boys yeah yeah i i i did you feel like you were um did you feel like the system, were you aware when you were a kid that the system was, was unhelpful or were you just like, oh, this is the way it is? Or, or did you think, oh, there's a better way than this? Cause I, I don't think I really, I thought that just like, that's the way things were. Um, that's how things were. And, and there were, and it wasn't exactly, um, tolerated. Yeah. I was I, I didn't feel tolerated as a young as a young kid and I didn't feel really tolerated at home. Um, you know, I was sort of seen as the bad kid. I was so, because I was that and I was messy and I would leave a trail everywhere I went. And yeah, um, that was just how it was in my house. I was bad and my brother you, was good. If you could have designed a better system. Do you, what, what do you think would have been more helpful for your development? Um, sorry, my power's out. Um, I think that there was a lack of compassion for the fact that I was different. Mm -hmm. I think that it would have been more compassion. It would have been more, uh real conversation i think there was there was a leveling with me that didn't happen and and look i don't know that i was able to um to accept that at that time 
I think I was just the kind of kid that you set free and he figures it out. Mm-hmm. Um, it's hard because I think that, you know, par- parents are always doing the best that they can with the tools that they have. Mm-hmm. Uh, that doesn't mean all the parents have all the tools, mm-hmm. you know, like, <laughs> like there's Definitely. a, yeah. So there's a, there's like a, it's not a brokenness, but it's, it's like a, like if, if, if my dad or mom or your dad or mom doesn't know how to manage themselves, manage mm-hmm. their emotions, manage their insecurities, manage their, um, you know, inferiority complexes or God complexes or whatever it may be. If they don't know how to handle their shit, how are they going to contain me? If I'm yeah. difficult, perceived as difficult, like if I'm not, if I'm not um, a cookie cutter kid. Well, well, also, I don't know if, if I'm sure that there was a you were aware, as you are a quite sensitive person and perceptive, that they may not have had themselves in that way and so you're also as a kid you're perceptive and so there's a there's a sense of like oh i'm not held here and i'm not held at school and therefore yeah. it, it yeah. adds to this it adds to this feeling of like oh fuck i'm you know it almost like it, it becomes a vicious circle of then of then like pushing the boundaries because you know there's no boundary you know like it's it's an unhelpful loop yeah and it and look it it created uh a dialogue in my head there was a story that played in my head that i wasn't good enough that i wasn't um smart that one still Mm -hmm. comes into my head pretty Mm -hmm. often Mm -hmm. the the uh the not smart or the perception that i'm bad which i think lives in a lot of men I've, i've i've worked with you know a ton of men and i and I'm in relationship, obviously, with a ton of men. And um, a good number, if 80% plus of the men that I've ever worked with have a narrative that they're bad. Yeah. Which yeah. which has come up for you. I've heard it come up, come up for you. Absolutely. And yeah. I think and I think when we when we're talking about this, there is a there is a um inner shame around that that comes inherently from ye- like probably years of of that being in, in early childhood that being a very that being a very kind of um strong message which is um if you do bad you get this and if you're not like all these other kids then you know i i, I was I was just not like that. So I was not kind of, I was, my learning style wasn't sit there and just, I couldn't, I couldn't focus and do, do any of those things. So then you're told that you're bad, which, and then you're told that you're, you have no value because you, all the value tests in England were you take tests when you're 11, you do. Um, I was talking about this the other day and I don't know, um, you guys don't have this, but in England, you take a test when you're 11, right? And you have maths, you take an English test, a maths test, and then non-verbal reasoning test, right? We have that. You have non-verbal reasoning? Oh, no, we, we have, well, I don't remember. You remember when you were 11? Yeah, I because uh, it's a big, it's a big thing. It goes from primary school to secondary school. It's our version of going from like middle school to high school. That's the big, that's the big jump. So at 11, you're taking these tests to decide your entire future. And like my, my math scores and my like, were so bad. Do you know what I mean? My science, like all of that stuff was so, I wasn't getting into any of those. So it's like, you're dumb immediately. And the idea that you would want to go to one of these schools is like, but you're 11. I'm like an 11 year old. Like it's a crazy (laughs) thing to tell an 11 year old. But my nonverbal reasoning was so good. I could I could work out how shapes moved in the thing. But but that was kind of seen as a bit of the like the dumb people's like te- you know what I mean? It's like oh yeah, that's the if you're good at that, yeah, that's that's interesting. But it's definitely not like valuable to society. <laughs> so you're like so it's like 
oh, I was always kind of, I, I was always kind of given this idea that like that is dumb. That you, you know that that I, I can't do maths. I'm shit at maths. I'm shit at science. And so, but my non, my non-verbal reasoning was off the the charts. But they don't. It doesn't actually come into the societal jobs or or u- utility to society. So I I don't know. Like it, there's a feeling if you're getting that at eleven, you're like immediately. You the idea is you know your pecking order. And and that's not a good thing to get in as an eleven year old if you if you feel you're down there. Well, what's funny about that is that your nonverbal reasoning is the reason you've been a success in your life. Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. like entirely. Like your your ability from from your ability to connect with anybody on any level to meet them where they're at to make them the only person in the room um, yeah. is the reason why you're you it's your charm it's your it's your superpower so i mean yeah I, but it's just a funny you know it's a funny thing I, I, that we that we um ha- have a society set up to value certain things mm-hmm. and so of course 80 percent of of men I, or certainly the people that you um that you coach i think it's going to be a high number where people are like, I don't learn like that. And I actually, I'm, a, you know, either it's, they're a much more kinesthetic learner or whatever they learn differently. And I, mm-hmm. you know, imagine, cause I think about this cause you know, you and I are on a, on a, on a men's team together. Right. And we meet every Wednesday and how, how interesting would it have been to like develop skills in that, in that environment younger like to have dynamic groups where you're in a team where you're in this and doing learning dynamically within it and i think it would have i think i would have felt such a relief instead of being like get me the fuck out of here get me out the fuck out of the system did you operate because i I was always scared as a as a kid like i was like i was plotting the the report card coming like two months before it was coming oh, and, yeah. like, and like, and like trying to figure out how I was going to hide it or I was going to like change, try to change the grade letters or, <laughs> <laughs> or how do I uh, turn in, how do I turn a D into an A? You just turn it into a B. Like you just kind of, <laughs> uh, how, like, how was I going to, what story was I going to cook up about how, how to how it wasn't my fault? Yeah. Um, like there were so many and, and, and it was a couple of months. Like I, that's one of the, one of my real memories is the fear of great. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Because and- there was so much value put on that. Totally. And like, I wasn't, I wasn't a kid that that, was going to ever uh be my strong suit ever right right and and it caused the shame that then caused i don't know if this did it for you but like caused me to be a bit of a a liar actually and and and, uh, or, or and caused me so much shame that i i would bend into shapes to you know like i remember and i was terrified of authority as a kid i was ter- i was just terrified that i was so i would get you know the sometimes the the headmaster or whatever would call for someone to see if their book was signed by their parents like their homework and i was like i was just sitting there everything i'd be like please jesus christ please please let it not be me and then i would just work out in the thing how can i forge the signature how could I create like, you know, exactly like you said. And it's, it's like, it bends your, and then I would, you know, people would, ask, you know, people would ask, and I would, I would have so much shame around it that it, it that I, I was so afraid yeah. of being found out that, yeah. um, that it, there is definitely a kind of, and I'm sure like lots of people have this, but, but I guess now that you and I are aware of, uh, 
what those things can do to young people's brains. You know, I know it sounds silly, but it is like one of those things where you're like, of course you develop some degree of like high hiding or lying about your intelligence or your, you know, it, the, of course it will imprint on you in some way. Like I still remember when you just said the grade thing, I was like, fuck man. Like I remember so clearly being terrified of that, of that exact thing. Like how, terrified. how do I get, how do I get out of this? Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and it fed the narrative of bad and, and we, the, the thing you just didn't want to be as a kid is bad. Yeah. Like that was, that was the, that was the most yeah. important thing. Cause being bad, like that wasn't just a home bad. That was like on the yard bad. And like, you'd get picked on and, like, I feel like kids are way nicer now than they were when we were kids. <laughs> yeah, I do too. Like, kids were ruthless when I was growing up. Ruthless. Yeah. And, like, I was, it, it, it kind of, like, it made it so in high school that I kind of separated and just didn't mm. really interact. And I went and was a loner. And then, like, I don't know, all of a sudden, like, in my junior year of high school, I was just, like, normal again. And, like, it was... <laughs> it was like okay like yeah. like punk rock came into play and like i, I could definitely pull that off <laughs> so, you're like i got this one I got this, this one, one. I got. <laughs> yeah so, so it was like dye your hair white get a snowboard figure out how to get that and then you could like have an identity that was something different because like i wasn't really good at school sports other than like volleyball and you weren't getting like you weren't making friends being on the volleyball team so no. but like the but like when that culture, it was kind of perfectly timed for me because mm. it was like 1993 mm. and that was kind of when like punk rock snowboard culture was kicking off, like really kicking off. And so mm. I just went that way and then I made those friends and listen, they weren't, they weren't great. Like, they, like we, we weren't doing, uh, we weren't doing our homework. I'll tell you that. Uh, but you had a, you had a, you felt like you were part of something. Yeah, but it was interesting because I was part of something, but those people for the most part weren't nice. They weren't like gassing you up or supportive or like trying to like, to like, uh, to like root you along to like win. All they were doing was just trash talking you and making you feel like shit, but yeah. you yeah. felt like you were a part of it. And it was like, yeah, you know, it was like, a, um, it was a place to go. And like yeah. girls were into snow, like it was like a whole culture I could I could finally be a part of. That I mean that's that's kind of um, I I, I kind of I know what you mean about find, finding a world in which um, you're a part of, but the undertone of it is like we we're, we're gonna rip the piss out of you. Do you know what yeah. I mean? It's not. It wasn't supportive in any. No. And like there's and that's very like I I feel like that's also um, a bit of a British thing that um that that like endures is like that <laughs> it is hell for it, like they you know the thing is like it's high stakes. It's like you're in it, but you just basically at any point you got you could be absolutely torn apart so it's part of the system is like you're like okay well i'm part of this but i'm also like no one's there going scott mate i'm so happy you fucking smashed that i'm i'm here for you that would be insane insane and insane. you're walking on eggshells always 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 100 percent of the time well let me ask you this right did because it was funny because someone asked me what are the things you learned from your culture cultural friends and cultural ties right and one of the things that i think has changed i think which is good but the worst thing you could be in boarding school in england was gay if you were gay like that was like if, sure. you, if someone accused you of being gay that was the thing that like it was i mean that i think it says so much right like it's not it's not really about it being gay it's more about uh, do you feel you know like yeah. are you a feeler are yeah. you sensitive yeah. or whatever it is yeah. that is the that's the that's the accusation right and it was like that is 
I think about that and I'm like, that was the kind of the thing that was the worst thing imaginable. Mm-hmm. Did, was that the same in America or was that just in boarding school? Yeah, no, no, that was the same. Um, again, it was the time because like for me, like I grew up kind of in like late grammar school was like when AIDS was the was right. was kicking off and like <clears throat> you know that was that was like if you were gay you were gonna have aids and you know you were right. it was like the ultimate cooties and right. um it's funny how that's evolved into yeah. now into now uh there's val like it's va- it's like a valued thing it's the opposite yeah, and, and like, you know, I know for all the woke madness, you know, and I, I know that like people get on about it, but like that, I, I am like, I do think that is a sign of some progress, it, you know, for all of its madness, right? Like, until, for all of... until it's confusing people, until like, look, I'm all for, I'm all for a person's right to be themselves. Sure. Um, it, it, it's there's a there's a line where it can become confusing uh you're there's an imposing of like with the pronoun thing like you're imposing on other people your shit sure i i just mean it uh, like if you take the kind of individual values i just think as a society if the value system is slightly more into like feeling isn't a bad thing yeah no that's you know, great i'm all i for think that. that's that i think that's i think it's just a sign like you know kids will always find ways of being fucking mean to each other and <laughs> ripping each other apart right that's kind of like how kids kind of try and order themselves in hierarchies and whatever but for that to be for that to have moved within my lifetime into something that's like um it, I think it shows there's a changing of values somewhere along the line. I don't know how it like plays out, but just that that feels like it's a different, I don't know. Cause I, I don't know what it's like to be in school right now, but, and it's probably, probably like euphoria. It's probably hell on earth, but like, it's, <laughs> it's <laughs> to a point for to sure. a point, yeah, but, yeah. but it feels like that part at least has changed. Well, so okay. On. So growing up as an actor, yeah. Uh, when you became an actor, mm-hmm. um, you know, that goes two ways. Like the, your your buddies in school probably made your life hell. And then you were getting all this attention from girls, which which gave which probably validated, you know, what was deeply insecure about you. And then all these women are kind of throwing themselves at you. Even when you're like 13, you're like, what the f- this is fucking great. <laughs> oh, you yeah. know, like, how was that? How was that to manage? Um, and, and, and what did that, like, what darkness came along with that with that validation, with that hyper validation? Well, we've talked about this, right? You and I have talked about this quite a lot, but I, it, it didn't, it's funny because those two things didn't mix because I was a late, late, like I looked about 13 till, till I was about 22 or something, you know, like I, that wasn't part of my, it's funny because it was a validation thing, but it wasn't feminine validation it it was more just like things would happen i would get i was performing to big um to big theaters when i was in my teens right late teens and so i was getting a a form of validation but i wasn't i hadn't developed i i I was still like pretty i was kind of pretty awkward actually Mm -hmm. um so it actually was for the first parts it was a form of validation that felt actually a little more artistically full because it was like i was just going out there and and i wasn't aware of my appearance i wasn't even aware that i had any value in that but then i went through puberty and like you know we've talked about this like that happening late i think had a a strange effect on my well, that's traumatic idea. that's trauma I, I think that is trauma but but i think also what happens is then when it comes along mm-hmm. you're like well this is going so i'm gonna have to 
I have to like take, you know, I have to, um, like I, there's a kind of idea that, that, that it's a limited time that you have a limited time because you haven't had it before. So there's no, there's no concept that it, it will, it will go as fast as it came, you know, that, that there's that sense. So the dark, the dark part was, I got, was getting this, this validation and it felt, and it was, I was being rewarded big, big time for, um, for it. And then I went to drama school and then I started like, I started to, to, to go to kind of develop and, and go through kind of puberty in a way that was like, I suddenly I had something to lose. Right. Like I, I, and I, and I think in some way that's when my art kind of went out a bit out the window. I was just like, Oh, well now I have to be aware that I have to keep this image mm -hmm. when I'm performing. And then with the darkness that I think that comes like, I was aware that I could have power over. I, w I suddenly became aware late that um, there was, that attraction made things easier for, for me. So meaning, I, meaning, the, meaning the way you were attracting? Yeah. I, I suddenly was like, oh, I, I can, I, it's a power. It's a power that I can use in certain, environments and um and suddenly and i and i think the darkness that came with that was that um i was so caught in my own version of well this is for me i this is for me you know like i i get this so i'm gonna go after it and it and then it would happen and and then I wouldn't value it. Um, and so my relation, like my relation, I just became, it became kind of, uh, there was a system of like validation and then, and then, um, dismissal that happened. Cause like, I would be like, okay, I've done that now. And then, so, you know, and that would, so you would have like a conquest and then you just toss it to the side kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. I would, I was very aware of how, how to use the sensitivity in the world that I had. Um, you know, act, the acting world is such a, it's such a mad world, right? You join, you join the circus and you go off and then you're away and then, you, you know, your life is, it's always impermanent. So it's having these impermanent relationships that I was surprised that people were attracted because I was like, "Whoa, this this wasn't this wasn't even a thing two years ago." So I think I regret I regret very strongly um, some of the relationships that I had when that power began to I I started to use that. You were, was, you were wielding it. I was wielding. I was a. I was an addict. I was an addict. You know. So I was. I was. I was using it to continue validating. Um, and and like with any addiction, it was diminishing returns. You know. I was, I was like, to begin with, I was like, this is the greatest. This is the greatest thing ever. Right. Because, and then the diminishing returns were just like then it, it didn't, wasn't enough. And then there was not, you know, and that, and that was with, that was with sex. That was with drugs. That was, you know, whatever it was, it was like, there was a, there was less and less, um, but it took me a long time. I mean, it took me a, a long time to come away from that. And, um, in some way it replaced acting as, as my, um, primary, means of expression right like i was acting but i wasn't expressing in it and i wasn't feeling fulfillment in it but i was i was getting i was getting to express in um sexual relationships or, or drugs or whatever in a way that felt like um 
that felt like it was a replacement. I don't, I don't know. Did you ever have that when you, after puberty, were you suddenly like, oh yeah, fuck, I have a, there's this thing that. Well, my puber my my experience of puberty was incredibly traumatic. Um and I and I think that's a lot that's a real thing with a lot of people. I went through puberty late, same as you. Um and I lived in in like a comparison of where other boys were at. Like like did this guy have hair on his legs and like was he looking at me like I was a three year old and like you know, like uh, I'm in like eighth grade and my friends are getting girls and I'm not because I look like I'm, you know, seven, you know, whatever it was, 10. And, and, you know, it, it, it affected m my psyche a lot. Mm -hmm. um, I graduated high school. I think I was five, six, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm, I'm like six feet tall. So it, maybe I was five, seven, but so my experience of it really started in college. Mm -hmm. um, I got to call, like my senior year of high school. I started experimenting with psychedelics and, but it you know, obviously wasn't in a contained situation. I, I, I did acid for the first time on a visit to Santa Barbara. I was at a, I was at some pre-college thing that I got kicked out of because some other person did. Some, I, I have a history of getting in trouble for shit I didn't do. And I, so I got kicked out of this, this, uh, program for like pre-college, whatever, uh, at UCSB. And I got kicked out for drinking and I wasn't, and I didn't do it. Mm -hmm. Um, I wasn't even at the bar that they accused me of drinking at and mm -hmm. I just, they just launched me. So I went back to visit and I did acid for the first time. And I was like, whoa, like I had like a religious experience and I was just like, whoa. Um, and that changed me and I somehow became more attractive to women after having that experience, like kind of the rough skater, snowboarder, wannabe tough kid, mm. something, some edge got smoothed out have, after I had that experience. And then, uh, I mean, that's I good, had, that's, yeah, that's a good, good advert for it. Yeah, I, actually, I took it and then I became attractive to women. Way, way better. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then uh, going into college, because I was in Santa Barbara, like that was kind of the thing. Hmm. Uh, and yeah, I mean, getting validation from women was really important to me because hmm. that was kind of my only focus. Like, I didn't give a shit about school because I knew that wasn't ever going to be I was never going to be an accountant or a lawyer. Right. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm just not wired that way. Mm -hmm. um, and then I kind of fucked around and I ended up becoming I ended up coming back, playing around at, you know, at school for just until I realized it's just not going to happen. And then I ended up getting some job. Uh, my dad was a lawyer and he was representing some uh, a women's shoe company. And so I took a job as a as a as a a, a salesperson or a, a, like a wholesale salesperson and sort of pseudo designer for this for this young girl's shoe company. And then it was just like, I mean, you're just around young women all the time. And then it was just like easy pickings and I was getting validated left and right. And that that really mattered to me because I, I, I didn't have a lot of confidence at all. Like I was really um, like the feeling of being bad and the feeling of like, I always felt like I was an ugly kid. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't, I just, and, and then looking back on it, I wasn't, but I, I, I really felt that way. Yeah. And so until, until I was being, uh, related to by the right people that I wasn't, I was never going to believe otherwise. So right. it, it, it was, there was a part of it that was good for me. Mm -hmm. um, I want to talk about what it means to be a sex addict. Cause I don't, I don't know that a lot of people really get it. Cause you know, if I told someone that I was a sex addict and, and, and thank God I'm not, cause that would have been a real problem. But mm -hmm. uh I don't know how many people really get understand it. Like, cause mm. a, 
a man would be like, yeah, every dude's a sex addict. Yeah. Like, that's Isn't that like what we're all motivated by? <laughs> yeah, sure. I, and, and I think, you know, there, there is a degree of, there's a degree of the, um, that the addiction part of it comes from a compulsivity um, that um, a compulsivity that is um, devoid of consequences, right? There's a kind of, uh, uh, there's something that many um, people talk about in, in addiction circles, which is that if, if it's, if it's, if you know that it's bad for you, let's say, and you, and you just can't stop that, that something is, something is running your, and there was a, there's an evolutionary thing, right? Which is that we all, we all have a strong wiring towards sex, sex or validation. You know, we, we, it's funny because like, as you describe what your, your childhood is, it's, it is something that like feels like if a child grows up with a sense that they don't have any utility or usefulness to society. And then the only thing that they feel is like, Oh, I feel this attraction, right. To whatever, to, to sex or whatever. And then that becomes the thing that um, their only thing that is actually useful at, and that they get validation from right then of then of course it wires in the brain a sense of like well this is this is what i'm gonna do like right. fuck, fuck going to school but but i think i think that what with sex addiction um and i'm I, i'm not an expert on the pathology of it but that that it's it's uh it's a going to this thing to numb out actually it's not it's not actually to the feeling it's actually to numb the feelings that are going on and then um putting yourself in riskier rich riskier situations over time that are um that are detrimental you know I, if you're always cheating in a relationship you know right. that there's something going on there which is that there's discomfort in the brain at having to deal maybe even with talking to a partner about how you feel, and then there's a hijacking of the system and the system goes, right, I know what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go do this other thing with these other people. Um, and and to, to some degree, lifestyle, you know, you described it quite well, which was like I you had to suddenly have this access to this world and, and it feels like well why not why not why why wouldn't i use this why wouldn't i like why wouldn't i lean on this as a thing but i think and i'm gonna really go against my british roots here right this is gonna i can't believe i'm gonna say am this, I, am I gonna hurt some you're gonna hurt some feelings i'm gonna hurt some feelings. i think there's a spiritual thing that's wrong with that actually there's something spiritually out of alignment which is that there isn't an ability to deal with life on life's terms and certainly not an ability to, to relate. And therefore, sex is the easiest way. A bit like some people it's drinking, some people it's drugs. It's like, this is my easiest way to relate with the feelings as close as I can get to them as possible. But the actual act of sex, like most sex addict addicts that I, I've spoken to and like that is like, it's not even the act actually. It's not act, the, the sex part is it's this, it's all the paraphernalia that goes into it. And then the shame after which mirrors the shame that we, f we felt when we were bad, you know, that we felt when <laughs> some, and that shame is actually the, the addiction because that shame feels like the that feels like home because it's been developed hardwired into the system to feel like, oh, I know I'm bad. I know I'm bad. So I just need to confirmation of it. So I'm gonna when my body 
feels a little uneasy, it goes to go do this thing that knows it will then produce this feeling that will be like, okay, I'm, I'm happy here. So I think it's quite, so it's, ha- it's happy in unhappiness. It's happy in unhappiness. It, right. It's com- it's comfort in, in, in the shame. And, right. um, so what's the, think, dumb, what's the dumbest thing you did? Uh, oh boy. <laughs> the dumbest, I mean, the dumbest thing, you know, I, the, the dumbest things were always, were always things that, that, that um, I would have, it's funny, like the times where certainly for me, my addict comes out with, with lots of things is self-sabotage. So it's usually at times when there's high possibilities of huge success. So things like um, really big opportunities or really big performances or really big moments that would have moved my career or my thing that I would like spend on the night, I like going out on the night in like at three in the morning trying to chase, you know, and it, it was kind of an unconscious thing of like the dumbest things were just like, go to bed, get up and go and do your, your audition tomorrow because it matters. But it was like, that's what I mean. It, then the triple shame of like, then I, I've, I've been to auditions drunk or I've been to, you know, things chasing women that, that, that before an audit, you know, and then, and then these big opportunities that people are like, you don't understand. This is you won't get this opportunity again. But right. you, you, that's the that's I think the dumbest version of it. And then, and then, and then, and then also like, I've I've had um, I've hurt people in in situations where you're like that person doesn't deserve to be hurt at you know at all. Like there's they've done nothing wrong. So there's so they think that. I think that there was a the self sabotage part. I think is the dumbest part, and people can't get their head around it. Right? They're like, "What are you doing? You you could get all the validation you want from this other thing, but it mm-hmm. it's like it doesn't come with the shame that you they require. you want, right. you require as part right. of it." Right. Um. So so it's a it's a strange malady, um, and like I said, like. Ugh. It, it pains me to say it, but the the spiritual spiritual solution is kind of the only only way. You, you, either you figure out that there is some something worth doing the right thing for, and get right with that alignment, you know. And you and I have talked about it because you and I share. You were at my first journey, I think. Um, one of my first, one of the first few journeys. Uh, I was at your second journey. Second journey. It's a Sorry, I think I did just journey. Um, I think I was at your second journey. So you were the, It was at Shannon Lee's. It was at Shannon's house. Yeah. I think that was so, the second one. So, so that was really the beginning of like of handling intimacy i can't i I couldn't handle intimacy but you were what's interesting about that is that you always you always were you always were kind of ahead of most people in that arena and then you were also there was a there was a double thing going on because you were you have a you had a propensity to be in really un- unhealthy relationships. Oh yeah, and, and 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 there was a toxicity that you were drawn to, and For when sure. so, and when something appeared to you that di- wasn't toxic, that's when you would sabotage. But you would fight for yeah. toxic. Oh yeah, you would fight oh, hard yeah. for it. Yeah, and and I think you can relate to this is because you're fighting for the feeling that somebody can give you that you're wrong. Well, for me, my, my relationship with toxic was, was getting in relationship with somebody who, and this is not dissimilar from what I saw from you, somebody that was it, so incredibly judgy, but somehow you got through the barrier. Right, right. I like like somehow I, you, I won. Yeah. I went through the thing. Yeah. 
And even yeah. though even though the judgment eventually would come down on you, like the 1% of the time that you mm -hmm. were made to be good or right or mm -hmm. not horrible, like mm -hmm. that was the only moment that mattered. Mm -hmm. and, totally. and yeah. And so I saw that from you. And, but I've also seen like your path coming through has been um, riddled with with like hardcore discipline, like hardcore discipline that, mm -hmm. you know, I've kind of poked fun at you for because like it's you torture yourself. It's fucking wild. Like you like like but it's. it's it's wild, at least from from, <laughs> from my from my perspective, like the shit that you have put yourself through is in sanity. It's nuts. Like, but it, it, <laughs> it, it, it it's it's a thing of like uh, it's I think it goes back to the core core value, which is and I, and I think you're totally right. I would place a system of judgment if somebody is really judgmental. Mm -hmm. I would be like, or it's really hard to get that thing. Mm -hmm. I put value on it because I assume that, um, I assume that they're being more discerning than life. Cause, cause I have an intrinsic feeling from my childhood, probably that like life is fucking hard and it's brutal. And so if somebody is, if there is a gatekeeper that is difficult, it's because that's actually the truth. Truth is that it's hard. And therefore, to get there, oh, I must have to bend but myself what, in all this kind of but shape. But why? Okay, so wh that's the question. That's the, the question is, why did it, does it need to be so hard in your... In your in your uh experience like why can't it be why can't it be just okay i'm i i've recognized i've done all this work and i recognize i'm good why can't i just be good um i think i think i'm i think i'm coming to that i think that's that's been a journey of like Oh, um, it's like, I want it. I, it's funny because I want to push it to the absolute extremes mm -hmm. to make sure that I'm not blindsided. Actually. I think that's well, because you've been blindsided because I've been blindsided my whole life. And mm -hmm. so I'm like, if I prepared more, I wouldn't get blindsided. That's my, that's my feeling around it. Like, if I prepare more, uh -huh. then um, I I will not be in a situation where I'll be in so much pain that I won't be able to survive. So I'll do really hard physical challenges. I'll like learn really hard skills. I'll spend a year being abstinent or whatever it is in order to be like, <laughs> well, if I can push this to the edge of its limit, then nothing will have the power over me to like floor me. Has and it worked? No, it hasn't worked. <laughs> <laughs> has it ever worked? No, it hasn't worked. And funnily enough, it's, 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 uh, it's a funny thing to see like people who haven't done it. And then I'm like, wow, you fuckers get away with not getting blindsided. Um, because I think my fear of being blindsided, it has just called it in actually, you know, like it's just called that thing over and over and over again. And I've had, you know, I've, I've had some things where I, I intrinsically don't, didn't trust the universe because I'm like, you can, you can do some pretty mad shit and that. And so Although, there's value you, in it. What you've, what you've really uh, d dove into recently seems to have made a real difference. And mm -hmm. I think it's important that we talk about, you know, this sort of new 
frontier that you're beginning, uh, this new path that you're beginning to walk that really feels aligned mm-hmm. with, with, you know, you facing your, your intimacy things. And also the gift that you have of, of really being the only, of making a person, um, the only person in the room and really connecting mm-hmm. with them and having that energy transfer and exchange. And, mm-hmm. um, you know, while I think acting will always be there for you because you, you're good at it. And, mm-hmm. and I, I think it's really, really fun. You know, it's, it's, I, I, I decided to do this podcast because I am good at talking and getting into shit and going down rabbit holes and, mm-hmm. You know, I, I want to help expose people um, for the things that they're good at, the things they're doing, the things that they're interested in, mm-hmm. um, give people permission to feel things that maybe they don't necessarily mm-hmm. that, they, that maybe they're scared of uh, relate to, you know, relate to look, there's a lot of people that are sex addicts out there and they feel alone. There's a lot mm-hmm. of people that are drug addicts. I mm-hmm. I can tell you I've, I've worked with a ton of people and I have yet in, you know, the hundreds of people that I worked with to find a single person that's not an addict. Never, I've right. never found one. Right. Absolutely. And, and whether Absolutely. You, whether you're addicted to uh, something that's socially acceptable, like coffee or mm-hmm. um, your story or, mm-hmm. you know, uh, mm-hmm. whatever it may be, or something that's not socially acceptable, like drugs or sex or, or, mm. um, it's it, it, there's a there's a myriad of different ways to get addicted to all of the things. Uh, you could get addicted to going to the gym. You could get addicted to mm-hmm. whatever it is. Um, mm-hmm. it, it, it's just when it when it feels out of control, it's become that. Mm-hmm. Uh, when you get sick, not having it, it's become that. Mm-hmm. Um, but what you're moving into is a world of of uh, unwavering intentionality. This this new uh, a thing. Do you want to talk a little bit about what you're, what you're getting yourself into? Yeah, I think, I, I think, <clears throat> thanks for that. I mean, uh, it's, it's, that feels really like a great, um, great reflection. And, and I, you know, I think I've always valued our relationship as a marker. Like we've really seen each other through some pretty, pretty crazy times actually. And, um, that you know there's been there's been many times i've been in 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 you you know in a conversation with you and and you've really helped guide me through some pretty uh, pretty uneven things I, in fact i've sat in that exact place that you're sitting and cried my face off and so i i i really appreciate your your um your sight on it. And, and I think as I, <clears throat> as I've been through my Daniel Sharma torture tour for the last few years, um, <laughs> you, you, you've definitely, um, you've definitely helped me with some, with some of the kind of reframing and recontextualizing things that I think, I think in lieu of that, my, my journey at the moment is, uh, and I and I mentioned this on Wednesday was the feeling of of waiting for it to be plucked from a place to be put into another place where the feelings won't happen, where I get to be like, okay, right, I get to 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 go away with with the circus again, is um, and has been a prevailing desire of mine. So um, being chosen, being chosen, being like, yeah, bit someone saying, I see your value, right? right? I see right. your value. You, you know, and, and it reflects the same thing, which is if, if a job is really hard to get and I get it, it's because I have a, a like, I'm, I'm more valuable than other people and right. that you know what i mean it, it it that's the mindset that that um that certainly i've prescribed to for a long time and also i've started to look at the desire underneath the desire which is 
why do I want to be plucked? What, 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 what from my life into right. this thing? So, so my life has in some way always had an impermanence about it, right? Like even the place that I live, it's kind of like, oh, I, I won't paint or decor, you know, I won't decorate it or a thing because I won't be here for very long because right. I, I want to be somewhere else. And, you know, something that you've reflected to me before, which is also in my friendships, my, the, all my friendships are like, you know, I have, I've been really developing my friendships recently and over the last few years because I'm not, I'm not working as much, mm -hmm. but, but the sense is like, oh yeah, we can get close to you, but we don't know when you're going to dis disappear. And that's a good, big fear. Well, it's that's a big been, fear of people. That's been the case. That's been the case. Mm -hmm. And it's the case to me, you know, like the, the, it's not just that the, the effect of it, it's like, I will get plucked, put into a different city. <coughs> I'm working. Therefore that becomes my world. You know, like I get into like this very small world. And it's pr pretend kind of, yeah. It's pretend it's, it's, inc it's very fleeting actually the, the the moment is very fleeting so so that all that to say is like i'm i as the strike and covid and, and and i think what i have begun to work on is what do i want to what do i actually want out of my life it's it's certainly not to be on the run all the time that that doesn't seem to be like a that doesn't seem to be a, a recipe for intimacy in any way. And I'm, as, as you said before, like increasing my capacity for intimacy. So, um, intimacy with myself, intimacy with friends, intimacy with, with, um, lover, like whatever it is, is there's, there's an intimacy that I am learning I can handle. Mm -hmm. And therefore, I'm kind of like, well, I want my life to be filled with intimacy. I want to be helpful to people, you know, and I've, I've watched, I've watched your development into, into going from a job that you're like making incredible amounts of money and the outward success, right? This idea of outward success. Um, and I've seen, I've experienced a little bit of it, you know, like I, I, I had all those things and, and yet, um, I've watched as you've done something actually more in line with your deeper calling and your prayer for something deeper. And I, and I'm, and I'm inspired by that. And so I'm, I'm moving into creating things that feel more in line with actually like maybe what happened before even I got told that I wasn't, you know, that I, that I wasn't good at maths at 12 years old, you know, like whatever that moment was before, mm -hmm. imagine what I would have to so imagine what my essence, the thing underneath the underneath mm -hmm. would actually want in, mm -hmm. if it wasn't, craving for something outside of itself. Mm -hmm. And, and I think you're right. I think I'll always be a, I think I'll always be an artist of some kind. I'll always be a creator because mm -hmm. it's in my, it's in my, but, but I want to create with the model of helping other people. I mean, helping people recover themselves because it's been a journey for me and I've done as you said a lot of a lot of learning in that and I, there's a lot of wisdom that uh, that I've accrued over time and and that I I I like the process of working especially around intimacy because I think for me intimacy is the thing that like that is like the canary in the coal mine. If, if, if you, if you, if you find it hard to be intimate with yourself or another person, mm -hmm. then. How do you define intimate? I think being the ability to be vulnerable mm -hmm. 
and not leave. For, for the and ability not leave. and not leave. yeah and not right. leave. and not turn away. Yeah. Okay. So, so to st- to stay open mm-hmm. in the fullness of someone's truth, I think, in, in both yours and somebody else's, I think that's where intimacy lives. Which is terrifying to most people. Fucking and terrifying, and we don't have practice with it. <laughs> sure, we don't. We don't. You know, I mean, like you, you learn as you go. You you fail. You know, you fail. You get rejected. You get left. You get uh, right. Uh, all of all of that. Um, right. Regularly. Yeah. Until you either uh, learn how to attract somebody that that can hold the space for you. Um. To be vulnerable, be awkward, yeah. Um, be uh, be scared, and that be okay. Or you can, you know, find someone like what you're um, embarking on, where you're really mm-hmm. um, coaching that and coaching it from uh, from from your vulnerability, from the fact that you've failed at it so many times and you've done all of this work, yeah. Um, to to dig yourself out of it to change mm-hmm. your story. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, you know, that, you know, for me, my old job was, was I ran, uh, I ran the fleet department. In essence, my, I had a partner and we basically ran a group of car dealerships <coughs> other than um, like the business element. We ran it as far as, as the sales went and we sold an ungodly amount of cars, but the motivation for it, Mm. was um was money and status Mm -hmm. and and the biggest thing that i that i learned um in the psychedelic work in the men's work um i've probably done 250 psychedelic journeys um and and as as time goes on (laughs) <laughs> and as time goes on with the podcast, I'm sure there'll be some crazy stories that'll come out and you've been there for some, some things mm. that aren't really of this world. And, and it's taught, it's taught me that my actual truth, my actual prayer is impact and scope of impact. And how many people can we affect where, where there's a, enough of an impact in their life that they're better for it. Mm. because you know getting a car while i love the process and being able to and i still do it i still help people in Mm. that in that in that arena i don't work at a dealership but i help people and they call me and i and and i shepherd them from the beginning of the process to the end of the process and that part of it i love Mm -hmm. but dealing with the with the you know the money and the and the this and you know did you get the the newest this and you know i must just in, in you know, Young said that your car is your ego vehicle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, while I worked at the dealership, I had maybe a hundred different cars over twenty whatever years. A hundred, nice. and so and so, I was really searching for myself. I was searching for for who who am I? Who is Scott? Mm-hmm. Um, and I wasn't getting answers until. Um, you know, I got into that work and I got into that work and I'm, I'm actually going to have a guy on, I had a, I had a headache condition and you want to talk about impact. Mm-hmm. I was, I was, I was six months away from killing myself. Mm-hmm. Um, I had a, I had a, a headache condition called cluster headache, which that got one of the guys that I'm talking to about coming on is kind of the, the predominant authority in that field. Um, not very many people know about it. Um, I think it's something that people ought to know about because there's struggles that we, that, that there a lot of people go through that nobody know about. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you've had your struggles and, you know, you've been a public figure and nobody's known about it. Mm -hmm. And you've been really brave in talking about it. And, Mm -hmm. you know, you had the podcast with, with, uh, with leggy and you, you know, you got into, to a lot of, a lot of shit and Mm -hmm. you, uh, you know, and you've done all these journeys and you went to Aubrey Marcus's thing mm-hmm. and, you know, you, you've, you've gone head on in the work you're, you're doing with Stacy and the work you're now going to be doing, um, with clients. And, and I, I mm-hmm. do want you to talk about what that really is. 
Yeah, well, well, I think, you know, before before we get into that, I do find it interesting that, like, you were in the business, like, ego, what do they call it? Ego vehicle? Ego vehicle, yeah. But, like, that you were in the business of, of basically facilitating other e- ego vehicles. And now you're in the, in, in the business of like destroying people's egos in order to <laughs> help, help them in their life. That's funny. Yeah. There's a, there's a universal, uh, there's a universal kind of uh, story in there somewhere. Nice joke. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so if I, if I, if I break down all of, all of, my own idea around it is is that um is that the uh obsession with self it is no way to express from actually and the reason that i mentioned the stuff earlier about suddenly having something to lose around looks or whatever is suddenly the ego gets in the way of the expression so there's there's a there's a moment when the ego is in the way of of your true expression and and you can do that for a while you can even be rewarded egoically for it for a while i mean a while i, I, I mean really for like, forever you can i mean you can i i think i think eventually you got to get good at reading the signs right like for you, they were cluster headaches. Your 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 universe is telling you somewhere and on the line, this is not the way. And something you can either listen. Right. Something's got to change. You either listen to it and do something about it, or you go, "I'm going to batter through this egoically." And you're still in your ego vehicle, just driving away, just being like, "I'm going to fucking do this." Mm-hmm. So, so in some ways, you know, I. I I love cre- I love creating and I love making but if I really look at it is my ego in the way of my creation probably probably so I'm deeply frustrated that uh, that I w- haven't been able to express in my field the things that I would want to express but there's no way of doing that with my ego in the way because it, it it it's it's a false channel there's something blocking the channel of creation in that in that in that instance so if i broke it all down it's like how do i how do i cultivate a relationship with my own channel of creation because i know when i'm in that it's unjudgeable i don't judge it i don't think about how i look i don't think about i'm in channel of like wow creation and things flow right the universe rewards that process Mm -hmm. and i'm getting to really have a relationship with that Mm -hmm. and partly i have to put down everything in my life that was formed around the ego trying to create the channel you know like I, i i have to destroy it all well create the channel or expose the channel or expose it, right? right. Like to, 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 to expose it because the structure was out of fear, you know, like it, I don't feel good enough. So I'm going to create this. I'm going to go buy a house. Cause that will make me feel like I've achieved something or mm-hmm. I'm going to, whatever it is, it's out of fear. It's because there's, there's a deep fear that, um, that, that I'll, I'll be to be kind of destroyed in some way. Well, there's, so, a, there's an implied or else. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so I think what the universe, if I'm reading the signs at the moment is like, Daniel, put away this idea that you're going to be plucked out of this world mm-hmm. into some great thing and develop my own sense of what, who I am, mm-hmm. what I am, my essence and then create from there without any obligate, like any desire or, or intention, right? I don't have any, I don't have. Attached to, do to a result. Exactly. Mm-hmm. So, so the work that I, and I want to do that with other people because I really believe in it as a, as a process, right? Mm-hmm. Like channel can come 
and 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 the thing that I would really like to to, to do is work with. I love working with with couples because there's a channel that exists between two people too. There's a there's a way of relating to each other uh, that when it's in flow, it's fucking incredible, and it and it's a it's a help to your life. It instead of if two people are in ego and then they're not feeding, they're just there's they're bouncing off each other, and there isn't this universal flow. So so I think to break all of the things down, the psychedelics, the working with with some great teachers and doing all these courses, you know, all, all, all my qualifications or whatever it is the the point is is that like i would really love to help other people develop their flow with each other and themselves and also to cultivate my own so and part of that requires a little like you know a, a little like i mean we talked i remember you and i talking when you were quitting the car business and you were starting on your journey. It's terrifying because yeah. you don't where, where, you don't have any reference for what it's going to be. You don't have any reference for the safety net. Um, well, there isn't a safety net. There's none. And you're sell and 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 you know when you're waiting around to get plucked, there's a passivity, so you can blame. There's a, there's a blame, like you could blame, they didn't see me or they didn't, but when, yeah. when you're creating your own deal, there's, it's active. So it's, it really is about you. It's about, are you showing up to this totally authentically? Um, totally. Are, is what you're doing landing? Yeah. And In real time. Take, and it's easy to take it personally. Yeah. But it's not, that's the thing that, the thing that really worked for me was, was to stop taking it personally. Um, yeah, <clears throat> I'm not going to be the voice for everybody. I know that. Um, mm -hmm. and that's okay. Uh, mm -hmm. because I don't want to be the voice for everybody. I only want to work with the people that are, that really live in, in the, the standards that we use for the men's team, you know, the, the, you know, that are having fun that are going to really most importantly be accountable and supportable. Those mm -hmm. are, those are really, um, important. I can't tell you how many people call me. And they want me, they want to work with me and mm. we sign on for six months or four months or whatever, whatever we decide. Mm. And then they spend the first two months fighting for their pain and their struggle, like mm. fighting me. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's been, you know, the, the gift that I uh, accumulated as a car salesman um, mm. really come in handy and doing what I do in, in, in working with people. Mm -hmm. um, in leading from behind in getting them to the epiphany rather mm -hmm. than put, rather than putting the words in their mouth, getting them to speak the words that, that they need to hear for themselves. Yeah. Uh, you're, I think that what you're, what you, what you had to do as an actor to be able to meet people where they're at, to be able to connect is mm -hmm. going to be incredibly valuable. Um, it's a marketable skill and you, I think you have a head start over somebody else who was trying to, to move into the field that you're, you know, when you're working with couples in an intimacy, mm -hmm. um, you know how to get there. Mm. Um, even though it hasn't been real world, it's been kind of pretend you still know the steps to getting yourself, getting yourself in that mindset. And mindset really is everything. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I, I think, I think that it's funny, right? Because I remember, I also remember, even when you were, uh, and I think you must experience this uh, over your life, even in the dark times, is people would come to your dealership as a car person and you, you'd end up being their therapist for like, you know 100%. so you you knew you knew in some way you knew that you had the skill it wasn't to... even just them by the way it was the other salesmen it was the managers right. it was the right. porters right totally and that and so i've always i've always had that that experience right people have always somehow come to me over either on set or or 
working in in some environment and like um or helping them with tapes or whatever and it's it's always like i love the process of making something more exciting Mm -hmm. more um more possible and also i believe so strongly in art and and the creation of art that Mm -hmm. i'll champion anybody who is putting is putting their ego out of the way to create and so all through my thing even if i wasn't actually able to do it for myself i had a sense that i was like oh i love doing that i like right. i love that that thing right and so and so i think it was i think it, it it's one of those again it's like the universe giving you a little like thing it's like you spent most of your day in your office, probably. I, I only say that because I remember doing it with you. Like you and I sat there for hours chatting away. Right. And, I, and I can imagine that there were people who, other the other workers there who were just like, there's something about, I need to go and chat to Scott. You know, there's, so so there were, there were signs along the way. Right. It's, it's just, it's just which, how long were you going to, be attached to what it was giving you, which, and, and it was giving you a lot. It was giving you a lot of like society, societal rewards. Mm-hmm. It's just like, I don't believe in those fucking societal rewards. I just don't. Well, well, to be fair, I, I don't know that I would have had the guts. I had a, Right after my daughter was born, I had a, I did a, 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 a journey here and it was only like four people there. And I had, I had an ego death and one day I'll describe that to it's, it was, it was not fun. Um, and coming back from that ego death, it was, uh, it was kind of shown to me that, that when I came back, I was going to have to come back with purpose. And then when I came back, I just went right back to work at the car dealership. And then the next month, because of the headaches, I do it. I do a ceremony every month. The next month mm. it happened again. And, and it was shown to me again. And then the pandemic happened. Uh-huh. Um, and then I was actually laid off. And I was like, I was like the top guy, you know, me and my partner were the top guy in the, all of the, the whole of the dealership. And I was let go because they said they couldn't afford to keep both of us. And so uh, the universe did it for me. Um, I'm forever grateful that that happened. And, yeah. you know, there have been times when my business has been slow and I have um, questioned it. Yeah. You know, and, and and that's my work is to not question. My work is to just do it, which is kind of why I named the podcast or do it or now. do it now. I was going to ask you what's or do it now. About. Well, it's it's because, you know, like shit or get off the pot like what 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 are we doing here are we what are we what are we um i mean there's a couple of reasons i named it that the main reason is is that i've been talking about doing this for two and a half years and Mm -hmm. i just haven't done it and 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 who else out there has been sitting around wanting to create something or wanting to to make a change or wanting to get out of a toxic relationship or wanted to um l- learn how to play again learn how to have fun again or wanted mm-hmm. like there's all of these things that as adults we've kept ourselves from mm-hmm. and why not just do it now what well, it's it, it, the concept is wait or just do it now mm-hmm. and and you know like on thursday I, I, i'm just gonna go snowboarding with a buddy which isn't something like it's like a, it's a fucking work day but i'm gonna do it because why not? Um, why not get out there and play? Why not get out there and have fun? Why not get out there and have conversations with people that you give a shit about and 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 be heard and be mm-hmm. seen? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I was never, I was never gonna be an actor, or a public figure, or anything like that. I could, I mean, I, you know, being dyslexic, I couldn't, I couldn't read lines if I tried, and so. Um, you know, this was a way that I could make a bigger impact, that I could get more eyes on uh, important, important conversations. Um, some of them are going to be silly and funny, but that's important too. 
Mm. Um, we need more silly and funny. I'm going to bring people on to talk about the car business. Talk about, you know, what that, f- I mean, you talk about the jungle. That's the jungle. And, and you know, I just think, I think there's a lot of value in, in getting off your ass, shutting up about what it is you're going to do and just do it. Mm-hmm. You know, Nike, yeah. Nike was right. And this is just another way to, to, to just do it. So that's why I named it that. Yeah, I mean, I I love that. I think, I think underpinning that also is this sense, like, of our conversation. What what I <clears throat> I remember, even though it's really hard to remember in the dark times, is the universe is always working for your highest good. Right. If you can work that out, if you can be like, okay, that there, there is something that this is telling. You know, that I'm sure as you're in headaches and you're going, you're there and you're going back and you're just like, this is so hard. And, and to, to, to read the signals that it's working for your highest good, it's actually purifying you for something else or it's moving. If, if I can get my head around that concept, my life becomes so much easier. Yeah. And, and actually then I am more likely to do it now. Yeah. I'm like more likely to be like, What's the universe telling me? Oh yeah, it's telling me shit. I'm I'm really waiting for someone to 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 give me something. Like maybe I should really develop something, another skill because right. I don't I Are don't you want to sit that. around and wait your whole life. Yeah, it's 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 not it's 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 if you look at it as the universe not going not going. Oh, it's not giving me it, but saying oh. There's something that's coming on here that isn't in alignment in some way. Let's push you towards alignment. And if you start swimming with the stream instead of fucking against it like a maniac, then your life becomes a lot easier. But but you got to be totally open to the possibility that, like, I mean, I'm trying to enter it right now, which is I've got to enter the idea that there are things that I don't know that I'll ever do again. Or well, there's things that possibilities that they won't won't happen, and and that I'm like, okay, well, universe, if that's what you want, if that's what you're saying, I'm gonna keep developing what I think. I'm um, go from one thing to another, and I'll see. Like, why can't hell, you do? Like, but also, why can't you do it all? Why can't you be? Why can't you be open to being picked and also be doing doing what you're doing? You know, sure. I, I'm I'm sure. not gonna stop coaching. It's also funny. I met I met a dude who's a comedian. who's a really funny dude, and and it goes to why I named it or do it now. He had a he had a um, a stand up tour called uh, God, and it is uh, grow or die. His name's Chris D'Elia. He's a he's a fucking legend. He is yeah. fucking hilarious. And I was texting with him. and I'm like, I'm gonna I'm gonna name it or do it now because it spells out Odin. And he's like, Fuck yeah, get after it. So I, I got so so on the record for the record i got permission from chris um to to copy his shit because it just worked perfect that's brilliant yeah that's brilliant Fucking, what, i didn't i didn't realize that it was a smart little uh small little acronym <laughs> so um all right so uh we got to wrap it up but um yeah. i appreciate you doing this um we'll definitely do it again um how can people reach out to you to 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 begin this this uh this intimacy uh stuff are you are you ready to start seeing people are you gonna wait a minute or where are we at i'm gonna i'm i'm gonna develop a platform for it and 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 build it out but 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 watch this space because i i would like to um I'd, i'd certainly like to work with people and i think as i'm traveling um i think i'm gonna go to london and and do and i think at some point like to start start really like working with people and and also helping the process of creativity so uh, watch the space i'm i'm it's in the process you you i think it's it's great to hear you know it's great to hear a podcast like or do it now because it's literally like i'm in this place of of like oh shit this is now that's all we've got really and um i do think that action inspires action and and so 
that process of just doing one little thing and and developing and seeing where that moves like it's it's an inspiring thing so um thank you mate it's i i always as always love chatting and um uh i i can't wait to see the other the other guests and you know i i'm more than happy to come back anytime you know i love just banging on about this stuff so i love it that'd be great all right love you brother i'll see you tomorrow love you, mate. all right see you guys see you Bye.